Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and may shine as a light in the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. 
and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves, of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in the divine image. In the image of God, they were created, male and female. God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Over the sea, over the birds of the air, every living thing that and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. On the sixth day, God finished the work that had been done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that had been done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth, when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. said, 
This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have sent my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Word of God, word of life. This is God. God, you created all things by the power of your word, and you renew the whole earth by your spirit. Give now the water of life to all who thirst for you. Rejoicing in your covenant of mercy, we may bring forth abundant fruit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Renew 
near them. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, because there were no great reason that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this what we told you in Egypt? Let us alone so that we can serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said, people, do not be Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. Have then the Lord has said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and to that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and go in after them. So I will gain glory for myself all his army, his chariots, his chariot drivers. Then the Egyptians know that I am the Lord, when I be glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariots. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and the pillar of cloud moved in front of them and behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong wind all night and turned it into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea and the ground, the waters forming a wall wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and great drivers, at the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and to a panic, clogging their chariots so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting against Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, stretch your hand over the sea, so that the water back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned to the chariots and the chariot drivers, and the entire army of Pharaoh followed them into the sea one of them remained. But the Israelites on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on the earth. Thus the Lord saved Israel from that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the shore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord had did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord Moses, the servant of the Lord. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand. All went after her, after her with her tambourine and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider have been thrown into the sea. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Let's pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, by the power of your mighty arm, you have delivered your chosen people from slavery under peril. A sign for us, salvation offered to everyone, is a baptism. Grant that all the peoples of earth may partake in the salvation of the Israelites and together dance on side of the sea, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to them, thus says the Lord God, come from the breathe upon the slain, that they may live. Prophesied as the Lord commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then the Lord said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house. They say, our bones are dried up. And our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. 
I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Living God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Breathe into us your living, life giving Spirit, that receiving the gifts and sacraments, 
of all your blessings through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And you 
Let us pray. God of deliverance, you saved Jonah through the waters of death, and after three days you brought him to new life. Speak to us by this sign, and call us to repentance. The voice of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Shadow 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These should pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound, of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and lyre, musical ensemble, you should fall down and worship the statue you have made. If you do not worship, you shall immediately pray for a blazing fire. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let God deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled against Shadrach and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, bound into the, the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I saw four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come out, said Nebuchadnezzar, as he approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. Of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not singed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. And as you said, blessed be the God of Shepherd who has sent an angel and delivered these servants who trusted in their God. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the god Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from them and their houses laid in ruins for there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way. Word of God, word of God.
ice and snow. Raise your voices high, praise and magnify all you works of God. Bless the Lord. Raise your voices high, praise and magnify all you works of God. Bless the Lord. Frost of winter with song so cold, dews of summer. By the proclamation of your prophets, you declare us to be to us the word of salvation. By the grace of your spirit, increase the devotion of all the baptized, that strengthened by your presence, we may withstand hardship and sorrow and be united with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of baptism into Christ. Rejoicing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, joined to Christ and to one another in the waters of baptism, we yet call to mind a world so filled with suffering from war and violence, COVID and hunger, homelessness and prejudice, national disaster and personal loss. We who are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness give thanks for the gift of baptism, and we plead for the Spirit to strengthen us by the mystery of Christ's resurrection. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away, 
and the Samaritan woman will never thirst again. At this holy font, we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to the living and the dead. And do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, I do and, I and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with Christ by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with Christ so that the body of sin might be destroyed, so that we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to him, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Her, whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni which means 
teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that Jesus had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace and mercy and peace be to you from our living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So there was an advertisement in a Milwaukee newspaper many, many years ago. Used tombstone. Name a price. Great deal for somebody named Dingo. <laughs> Supposedly this really is true. <laughs> I have my own used tombstone story. Right? True, you can't write this stuff. Set up. When I was teaching parochial school many moons ago, we did outdoor education several times a year. And in the winter, we took the eighth graders out to camp, about an hour out of the city, and spent Monday to Friday. We did science outside, ice fishing, ice skating, had great time if there was enough snow sledding or rubber tooting. And, but beforehand, there was a lot of preparation involved. And so each quarter, the teachers from different schools who were involved in outdoor education would go for a little teacher seminar on a Saturday before the quarter started so we could all be prepared and get ideas for our various outdoor classes and you know, learn the rules of the camp and how everything worked and food and all that. And we had some really great experiences. And uh, so, but this one particular time I'm thinking of, a very good friend who taught at another Lutheran school and I decided we would drive up the night before, Friday night. It was common for a lot of us who knew each other at different schools to go up the night before, play cards, have a fun evening, and then you could sleep a little later and be there when everybody arrived for the workshop. This was a particularly bitter winter, right? And so we drove out of the city, dark, cold, wind is howling. It is sub-zero. There is snow on the ground, and of course what that means in the country is snow is blowing across the river, river, across the road, rivers too. And my friend, this is a few years ago, I think it was a 1970-something gremlin. <laughs> you and I could probably blow this car off the road. <laughs> now, Cheryl, this good friend, we knew each other in college. She taught at a Lutheran school, I taught at a neighboring Lutheran school. And so we thought it'd be great fun. We're driving, the wind is howling, we're on a country road, there is nobody in sight. There's a couple of lights from farmhouses out there, right? And we're on our way. Flat tire. <coughs> Pull up on the side of the road. Okay, we're gonna change this tire. Sub-zero, howling wind, Snow blowing, you got the picture. You, you didn't want to ask how could it be worse because maybe something would happen. Get out. I opened the back of the gremlin. There is a tombstone. And you, you will not, you think I'm making this up. The name on the tombstone, William Schwingle, right? <laughs> Schwingle's tombstone. Dear sisters and brothers, it was a used tombstone. 
because Mr. Mr. Schwingel was a veteran, and after some time, his family had bought this as a marker for his grave. Oh, Cheryl's fiance worked part-time as a grave digger at a cemetery. And so needing weight in the back of this gremlin, he had said, you know what, we'll just put a little weight in the back of the car. This guy, Schwingle, his family got a much nicer tombstone. And, and so they've replaced this one, so it's just in the office. So I'll put it in the back of your car, right? So before I can change the tire, get to the spare, I have to move a tombstone. <laughs> Wind howling, right? Okay, all of this is happening. A policeman pulls up, a, a, a county sheriff pulls up. Kind of looks at us, you know, comes over to, to buy us. I'm, of course, I'm hoping this guy will help us change the tire, right? He kind of, what, you know, assesses the situation. Yeah, it's flat, okay. So he pulls the car around and puts the lights on us, and then he stays in the warm car. <laughs> Cheryl and I struggle. We get, we get the tire changed. Hands absolutely frozen into claws, right? And of course, we've got a great story to tell why we're late and when we get there and we see everybody. Used tombstones. Used tombstones. The promise of the resurrection is that there shall be a day when there will be no need for grave markers, that all tombstones will be used and not needed, like a used car lot, used tombstones. The promise of the resurrection is life. And the promise of the resurrection, though, is not only life there and then, but here and now. Cheryl died two years later of cancer. And the emotions are still raw, 30 years later. And I think of that moment in that howling, cold, bitter wind, which seemed to me symbolic and powerful reminding us of the brokenness and the burden of this world and the inhospitability of this broken world and its broken relationships. And yet that promise, as we laughed and cried and thought, who would ever believe this happened to us? And I remember Mr. Schwingle didn't need his tombstone anymore. And there will be a moment when Cheryl doesn't need that tombstone anymore. And you and I will never need a tombstone anymore. Contrary to so much of what we experience in this life, to the brokenness, to the sickness, to the greed, trapped in systems that categorize us and cause us to compete and to seek to make people somehow lesser than one another, all of that is the promise of all of that being repaired is in the resurrection of Jesus. At this wonderful celebration. The story before us in John, of course, I think is one familiar to all of us here. And the little details add so much, in a sense, personal remembrance of the moment. Like my remembrance of the changing the tire story. Oh yeah, that happened, and this happened. And, and how somehow I imagine that if I was there, I think I would have hesitated going in. Somehow the thought of an open grave, we've all been at cemeteries. I can't even count the number of funerals that I've done. We've seen the open grave. We've watched it lowered perhaps stayed long enough for the dirt to be placed over it. And all of our experience tells us the reality of death, the brokenness of this world, and yes, we need a savior. We need 
the one who will make tombstones obsolete. We need that one, the firstborn of the dead, the one who was laid in my tomb and your tomb and has broken death. Used tombstones. I don't know if you have plans for that moment when you leave this world. Twice in the past year, I've gone back home to Chicago to lay relatives to rest. Dear relatives, close relatives. And yet, we shout at the gravesite, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And that makes all the difference that we know that this is not the end. I love particularly the story of Mary in John's account. I see myself there, perhaps you do too, how it, it just doesn't fit, it just doesn't make sense, I can't put it together. How, it, it, somebody must have taken the body. Where is it at? And then Jesus simply speaks her name and the recognition, wow. And she must have lunged to grab him or to hold on to him or something, or we don't quite, we're not quite sure. It's like, don't hang on. <laughs> Go and tell the others. My dear siblings in Christ, we know that Jesus lives. And that wonderful message that's recorded for, my, for us from 2,000 years ago is still so meaningful today and going forward. We all face the reality of our broken world, our broken bodies, and death. But death does not get the final word because we are people who follow Jesus. We are Christians, little Christs. We are people of the resurrection. We know that beyond cross and grave is life. And so the challenge comes to us, particularly, I think, at Easter, but every day of our discipleship, to live and let that life be seen in us in all the small and large ways of our life, that the living Jesus lives in you and me. This is what the world needs. This is where we pin all of our hopes and our certainty, that because Jesus lives, you shall live also, I shall live also, and we need fear nothing, even death. And there will be that moment when there will be no tombstones. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
on this most holy night. We pray that God renew the world with the joy of new life, responding to each petition with words from the psalm, your mercy endures forever. We pray for the church, for all who serve in the church, and for the newly baptized, that the light of Christ illumine us throughout all our darknesses. Grant us your life, O God, our light. We pray for the earth, that your creative power repair all that has been harmed, and that we treasure what you have provided. Grant us your life, O God, our maker. We pray for the nations of the world, that age-old prejudices will cease and that justice be granted to the dispossessed here and in every land. Grant us your life, O God, our refuge. We pray for peace throughout the world, that wars cease, that violence be halted, and that all leaders of all nations work together for a time of peace. Grant us your life, O God, our stronghold. We pray for all who are sick and for all who are suffering that they may find remedy for their distress and that they be brought to wholeness in you. Visit the people of Baltimore. Hear the names we call out to you here. Grant us your life, O God, our nurse. We pray finally for ourselves that you receive our silent petitions. You who stand with us in the fire, grant us your life, O oh God. We praise you for carrying all the faithful of the ages from death to life with Christ. Bring us at our end with all the saints to rejoice at your everlasting banquet. Grant us your life, O oh God, our spirit. To you, living and loving God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one with whom we have been raised to new life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The peace of Christ be with you always. We greet one another with the peace of Christ.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. The true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who in dying has destroyed death, and in the rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, Cherubim and Seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. We, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherish them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to life in your spirit. You called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which, re which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. 
Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful one, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing. Until needy no longer, and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come.
I invite you to stand. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace to eternal life. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, spirit of truth, Bless you all now and forever. Amen. Amen.